Welcome everyone. I am Ivone Gilud from Málaga, Spain, and together with my co-corresponding author, Roberto Bernicanani from Naples, Italy, we are going to present our recent review article entitled Skin, Gut and Lung Barrier, Physiological Interface and Target of Intervention for Preventing and Treating Allergic Diseases. In this article, we start reviewing the structure of physiological interfaces, started by the skin, which is a very strong physical barrier, which is meant to isolate the, bo isolate the body from the environment and is composed of different layers of epithelial cells, finally terminally differentiated keratinocytes and also stratocornium. In the skin, we can also find other resident cells like Langerhans cells. On the other edge of the structure, we find the uh, intestinal epithelium. In this case, uh, this structure is meant to allow the pass of nutrients through it. So, it is composed of a single layer of epithelial cells together with other cell types like panet cells of tap cells. And with intermediate features between the skin and the intestine, we have the airways. So, the lower and the upper airways share many simi similarities in terms of epithelium, even though in the lower airways we can find uh, additional cell types that are not in the upper airways. So this, uh, the airways, the epithelium, has a pseudo-stratified nature with intermediate features between the skin and the intestine. Uh, all these uh, structure in homeostasis uh, count on time junctions which keep the epithelial cells together. We have also basal, basal cells in the epithelium that are the progenitors of the differentiated epithelial cells and a normal basement membrane. When these interfaces are exposed to the exposome, for example, pollution, micro nanoplastic, cleaning products, allergens, ultra-processed food or microbes, pathogens, this can lead to the disruption of the time junctions. then we have like holes uh, among the epithelial cells which activate the proliferation of the basal cells, then we have an undifferentiated epithelium, also apoptosis of epithelial cells and the position of extracellular matrix. In the exposure of these uh, exposome components continues, we will find uh, additional fibrosis, proliferation of fibroblasts, and in the epithelium we will find acanthosis, uh, undifferentiated epithelial cells, thickening of the basement membrane, and ultimately a recruitment of hematopoietic cells like innate lymphoid cells, lymphocytes, granulocytes, or dendritic cells. The exposure of epithelia to detrimental environmental factors could lead to skin, gut, or lung barrier dysfunction, facilitating the occurrence of clinical conditions such as atopic dermatitis, eosinophilic esophagitis, and asthma. In atopic dermatitis, skin barrier dysfunction inflammation could facilitate the abnormal antigen exposure with consequent risk of food allergy and epidermal defects such as pongosis and acanthosis. Similarly, in eosinophilic esophagitis, epithelial barrier dysfunction and inflammation facilitate the occurrence of food antigen sensitization and the development of fibrosis, smooth macular hypertrophy, with the negative impact on esophageal motility. Lastly, in asthma, gubbed basal cell hyperplasia with tissue remodeling occur, including base, basement membrane thickening, subepithelial fibrosis, and smooth muscle hypertrophy. Now we know that epithelial barrier alteration triggers the release of epithelial cytokines TSLP, T mix stromal lymphopoietin, and interleukin 33 that drive downstream cascade involving TH2 cytokines that are responsible for the signs and symptoms that you observe in these patients. And altogether, these evidence are inspiring the research on several biological therapies for allergic inflammatory diseases directly or indirectly targeting the skin, the gut, and the lung barrier. In our paper, we discuss all these approved and investigational biological drugs for epithelium-driven allergic and inflammatory diseases. And an example of these drugs is tenevelumab. It's a human monoclonal antibody that blocks TSLP and is approved for patients with severe and uncontrolled asthma and is under investigation for chronic rhinosinusitis and eosinophilic esophagitis. 
So we conclude saying that the epithelial barriers of the skin, the gut, and the respiratory tract are critical interfaces between the environment and the host, and exert a pivotal role in modulating the immune response. And the several environmental factors can disrupt the epithelial barriers, leading to inflammation, infl facilitating the occurrence of several diseases, including atopic dermatitis, eosinophilic esophagitis, and asthma. And the inhibition of the pathway of epithelium-derived and Th2 cytokines can be an effective strategy for treating this condition. Thank you very much.